say what the divine, the ultimate reality is not. If you speak on the mythological level, you may speak of what the divine is like. Because myth is not a falsehood, as one uses the word in a sophisticated way. A myth is an image, a concrete image, in terms of which man makes sense of the world. And thus the idea of God the Father, or God the Maker, is a myth, because it's an image. And Christian theologians distinguish equally between two kinds of theological language, which are respectively called cataphatic and apophatic. Apophatic language is negative, as when we say God is infinite and eternal. Cataphatic language is mythological, as when we say God the Father, God is love, and all the positive designations. We are not saying God is a cosmic male parent, but is analogous with the Father. So with Hinduism. But what I'm going to speak to you in, first of all, is the mythological language of Hinduism. The idea of the universe as the big act. The universe is God playing hide and seek with himself. For God is thought of fundamentally to the Hindu as the self, the self, the cosmic I. And it is a basic proposition for the Hindu that only the self, the Godhead, is real. There is nothing other than the Godhead. So that the appearance, uh, the feeling that there are other things than the Godhead is called Maya. Maya. We ordinarily translate that word illusion. But you must be careful about the word illusion. Illusion is related to the Latin ludere. And that means play. And this is why the analogy of the world is dramatic. It's a play. In the sense of a stage play. Now, when you go to the theater, you know what you're going to see is not for real. Because the proscenium arch tells you that. That everything that happens on the far side of that arch is only in play, not serious. But the actor, and you will hope that he will be good at it, is going to try and persuade you that it's for real. So that he will so move you that you are crying or sitting in anxiety upon the edge of your chair. And so the audience is almost persuaded to be taken in. Now what about if this would happen with the very best actor of all, the great actor? The audience would, of course, be completely taken in. But in this case, of course, the actor and the audience are the same, the self. The self has thus the capacity to abandon itself, to forget itself, to hide from itself, and thus to make the most completely convincing illusion, but in play. And so the activity, the creative activity of the Godhead in Hinduism is called Leela, which means play. Our word lilt is related to it, I think. <laughs> but so also in the book of Proverbs, you will find a discourse being given by the divine wisdom the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. I think it's the 22nd chapter of Proverbs, in the course of which uh, the wisdom says that its delight was to rejoice, the King James Bible says, in the presence of God and with the sons of men. But the Hebrew translated rejoice says play. Rejoice is a sort of dignified Elizabethan, uh, but it says play. And St. Thomas, aware of this, 
said that the divine wisdom was above all to be compared with games because games are played for their own sake and not for any sort of ulterior motive. So also music is a kind of non-purposive thing because you don't either play music to reach a destination nor do you dance to reach a particular place on the floor. It is the doing of it itself that is important because after all if the object of music were to gain a certain destination those orchestras that played fastest would be considered the best. So the, the, the idea is that, the, that dancing and music more than other arts represent the nature of this world. That it is playful, that it is sport. That it may be sincere but is definitely not serious. And as G.K. Chesterton well put it once, the angels fly because they take themselves lightly. <laughs> How much more so the Lord of the angels? So if a beautiful lady should say to me, I love you, and I were to reply, are you serious or are you just playing with me? That would be quite the wrong response because I hope she's not serious and that she will play with me. I should say, are you sincere or are you just toying with me? Because you see, the word play has many different senses. A person who is playing the organ in church is certainly not doing something trivial. When you go to see a play called Hamlet, you're not seeing something trivial. When the concert artist plays Mozart, he is certainly entertaining you, but it's not a trivial entertainment. But on the other hand, we would use play in a, in a quite a different sense when we mean just fooling around, doing it for kicks. So it is fundamental, as a matter of fact, to both the Hindu and the Christian traditions that the universe is the play of God. But the Christian thinks of it in the terms of uh, construction play, like building with blocks. And the Hindu thinks of it as dramatic play, of the actual participation of the Godhead in the creation, so that every being whatsoever is God in disguise. Hinduism speaks of the Godhead as you uses the word Brahman. This is a neuter form in Sanskrit from the root bri, which means to grow, <coughs> to expand, to swell. The neuter form Brahman uh, does not have quite the connotation then, you see, of kingship that we will find attached to the Western idea of God, but is also referred to as Atman. And this word, we translate ordinarily the self. So you can have the para param, you put the M in to connect the particle, Paramatman, which means para, the supreme self, uh, or sometimes just the Atman alone, and that means the self in you. But the fundamental principle of Indian philosophy is Atman is Brahman. Your self is the supreme self.